um, her responsibilities are uh, in geo or science education and diversity issues K through um, graduate level. She's um, been a teacher in the Philadelphia school system. Also um, fulfilled a couple of roles in many professional societies, um, including the Association for Women Geosciences, um, Geoscientists, and the GSA, um, and <laughs> Triple AS. So, um, without further ado, we are going to uh, let Marilyn wrap us Ready to up. rock and roll. There you go, rock and roll. So, hasn't this been a great three days? Um, I mentioned to the breakout group, I don't know how my brain will function well when I get back to the office because I won't have all this great input from all these different points of view. It's going to be kind of depressing for a little while, but I know where to find you. Um, when I finally realized that I would be coming, which was Friday, uh, I thought, what can I offer at this point in the conference? So the roadmap that I will offer is much more one of concepts and procedures than a place-based locational kind of model. Uh, but I think that we really started on that path this morning. So is there some place I need to specifically direct this in order for to advance? Um, yeah. yeah. Rich. So rich is where things move forward. Okay. <laughs> My colleague Denise Barnes did a really nice and generous uh, thing when she identified some of the programs in NSF's Education and Human Resources, Human Resource Division's programs and some of the diversity targets. And diversity endeavors happen all across the foundation. But we are the division that has that specific task. So I just wanted to tell you a little about that. This is our mission statement. If you want to see our portfolio of programs, there's a website at the bottom. Uh, we have the job of broadening participation in STEM. In one of our breakout groups, we talked about broadening participation is different from diversity. Um, I think it's really interesting to think about those concepts as we move forward in CECL's project. Our goal is to uh, have efforts that result in a diverse, highly capable STEM workforce and using what we've come to at least as the mechanisms of evidence-based practices, critical review of program results to assess impact, data-driven continuous improvement, formative, summative, the things that you know, and broad dissemination of program findings. So there isn't anything here that you don't know, but I hope that will serve as a reminder. The considerations that I came to are very similar, I think, to some of the initial questions from Diane. I think we must have been channeling each other. But I think when we are starting a project, and particularly when you're thinking about a proposal, you want to refine your thinking. Not your hopes, not your aspirations, but it's Linda's 20 is different from 40. What is it that you are going to really commit to doing because you're going to set your goals, you're going to set your evaluation points to that limited portfolio? Doesn't mean it's the only place for you to go, but do think clearly. So here's a set of questions. What's the objective? Why do you want to do it? Who is the audience for this? What are the desired outcomes? What are the optimal strategies? So we were talking about best practices versus documented good practices. So uh, who will do this? That's always a challenging question. How do you know what you have achieved and how will you know what needs more work? So this is the framework and this is the overview of what I hope that we will have a bit of a discussion on. I have till 2.15? Yes. Okay. So this is the objective and the why that was on the CECL website for the workshop. But although it frames a lot of the ideas that I think they will have going forward, uh, it's really about the workshop more than the project, but it does give you a starting point. And I will come back and ask you about this. The why, I think, is particularly challenging, and we talked about that richly this morning. And then there's the Jillian cross-cutting themes that cover the rest of the planet that the first statements may not. This is tough stuff. And how to take issues and how to narrow them down into very concise, limited, measurable objectives. Is, is basically the next level of task. Who is the audience? So stage one of the audience is those of us here in the workshop, and I think that that fits very well. Who's the next audience? I think it's probably two stage. What might those stages be? Any answers, any ideas? 
You've been shy. I have treats. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> no, thanks. Can you repeat the question? Yep, I can. Next stage, so workshop, seat layers. Who's the next stage of audience, do you think? We should probably do microphones. Yeah. yeah. So microphones. I'm just thinking, um, in, as a timeline, the next stage would be to share what we've been doing with our colleagues. That's not necessarily the top priority, but it's the first one that will be most likely to happen. I feel comfortable with that. We have one more in the back. Treat. Yes. Oh, yes. So, okay, see. now we find out who the chocolate lovers. Ooh. That's okay. It wouldn't be the first time I fell on my face. I guess the the other um, group would be the people who are not here. So other yes. stakeholders who are not, not here. Not only other stakeholders, but other groups who may not be stakeholders who are not here. I don't. I don't need a treat. Thank you. You don't need a treat. Okay, maybe I'll try to find something else. So, did everybody hear what Leslie said? Yeah, but I would like a little bit more clarification on who are in. Yeah, can you just clarify a little bit? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Carolyn suggested other, Carolyn Brinkman suggested other disciplines that are trying to do similar sorts of things. I think you were talking about the uh, astronomy uh, as an example. There are people trying to do these things across, and there's stuff we could have pulled in from, from there as well. I'm, she should get that. It's fine. I'll make sure that happens. So for me, Leslie's <laughs> response, uh, what did I do? I'm holding it Ooh. as an escrow for you. Uh, what, we, what do we do? I hit the bottom button. Oh, you killed it. There it is. Yeah. Whatever you do, don't hit don't the bottom. Don't hit the bottom button, the square box. So I think part of what we're looking at here is maybe fleshing out one stakeholders and who was who was a stakeholder who wasn't here level two collegial community who will be implementing and so on and definitely for me that third tier and the actual objective would be the students right the people that we hope to pull into the profession so audience there you go done outcomes a diverse workforce consisting of the best and brightest my colleagues have already heard from me about best and brightest. Do you know where that phrase comes from? I'm, actually, I'm curious first about what that phrase means to you. Is that who you're targeting in your programs, the best and brightest? Mm. Does that mean they're not quite as good as the very best? <laughs> That phrase makes me crazy. It really does. Anybody else infuriated by it? For me, what I have seen come out of that has been a very exclusive group. That's part of why it really disturbs me. So I heard it. I was at an African-American Alumni Council meeting, 25th anniversary, and somebody said, best and brightest. And I said, OK, that's it. I'm going to find out what this means. So this comes from, if any of you remember the Kennedy generation, if you remember the Kennedy White House, he had this group. He really worked hard to recruit a group of really bright wonks, right? Very bright young people staffing the White House. These individuals eventually um, led the White House into some questionable decisions. But when they were selected to go into the White House, they were the best and brightest. They were the brilliant ones. They were the ones that would be leading the nation. So we don't really want the best and brightest by David Halberstam's uh, generation. The book is called Best and Brightest, so check it out. There are some references before that that go into things based in poetry, Shelley, based in church. But the exact phrase and the way we use it comes from that book. Let's stop using it. But anyhow, so diverse workforce. Transdisciplinary and international in scope. I think we've come up with a lot of that. 
and the STEM on-ramp for underrepresented groups. And I had questions about what on-ramp means. I think I understand now, but does anyone want to elaborate what you mean by on-ramp? You're very welcome to it. All right. Um, I think an on-ramp, the way I've used that is you identify a disconnect or a gap in the way somebody progresses into this area and you try to plug that gap with some kind of program that eliminates that barrier and makes it easier for people to to get into your whatever you're trying to do. Interesting. So for example, you ask yourself what ha why are students community colleges not transferring to four year What happens during the year after you graduate when you're not sure you want to go to graduate school? Those are places where you can have you can draw them draw people in. And there are many, many possible situations where you might see that. But that's how I've kind of thought of it. So multiple on ramps for this Big, high, big highway network, right? I mean, that's great. Somewhere, for at least those who are planning, I think you'll want to articulate that. But for me, that was very clarifying. I don't know if that is the case for others. So, great. Are these measurable? Any of the things that I highlighted or anything that's on the page that you see as an outcome? And mind you, I did pull this from the CECL website. Workforce is measurable. <laughs> if okay. it, I said workforce, we can we can measure that in some respects with uh, uh, it depends on what you mean by workforce. You mean the amount of jobs that are out there or the community <laughs> a diverse. So for me, for me, workforce um, is yeah. I think it's a good goal, but I think it's hard to measure. It, it, well, I, if you, if you, <laughs> and if you go to the Department of Labor website to try to get workforce statistics on any one sector, it's really hard. So just, just so you know, I just want you, I want this to be helpful, not critical. Think about the things that you target. Make sure that they're measurable. So you might want to measure people. Were you going to say something? Okay, people going into X discipline. And be very specific about discipline. Aww. I'm sorry, my wonderful <laughs> collegial assistant, <laughs> Caitlin. So, I just wanted to add to something that Rich said about the definition of on ramp, because we use it in Exceed, and it really means a pathway with no implication of barriers being reduced or gaps being bridged. We talk about the on-ramp, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's truly accessible. And so I think what we want to do is clarify a little bit that what you intend here is to bridge gaps and lower barriers. And and that that isn't always what's meant by on-ramp. I'm fine as, as long as it still fits on one slide. <laughs> but you know, the problem is, I, this is really a, a problem is to be we want to be Thanks. succinct and clear, yeah. uh, but we, it, you know, we have to also capture all these, uh, you know, possible misunderstandings and try to deal with them. Well, the, and the other thing I want to mention is that on ramp is how one gets onto the crowded freeways in Southern California, and it real they really suck. I mean, the end point is being on the freeway, which is the last place in the world you want to be. So, I'm just I wishing we could come Southern up with California, another one. I always look for the nearest on ramp. No. Yeah, my wife, yeah. No, but I, I, I think that's just one of those, every one of those words, you know, diverse, what is diverse, what is workforce, what is the, mean? you know, you can go through, what is, yeah. what is, well, you can parse that out and actually create sort of a two to the 21st power possible. But your project thing. is yours, so you can define diverse for your project. That's you probably right. will not change the definition for me. Why I or, say, or I say on ramp, this is what I mean. It, yeah, no, but. I'm the worst. I'm making up stuff as I go along. But you will be shaping the project, and you will be coming to some concise plan, and that, the, that is your definition, so that's fine. No. 
I'm clearly in. I'm I'm hooked, right? But I know. I just I'm well, not writing your 15-page proposal I, to anyone. Yeah, there is. I can't do that. Yeah, I just want to clarify: the first-person singular is not okay. applicable here. Well, I think everybody's pretty much on board. I've heard wonderful things that people have been doing and committing to already, so I don't think you have to worry about okay. that. Good. I'm not worried. We are not worried. It's like me take up the but I think this pronoun exercise is fun. So having defined where it is that you want to go, how do you get there? So you had some sessions, some breakouts, where people talked about strategies. Who will do the planning and implementation? Obviously, the pronoun we has been very clearly inserted here. But, but this has to be the, the responsibility of a small group, ultimately. Not the work, but the decisions and the shaping. Uh, how will you know what you've achieved? Because you had very specific targets, and you developed metrics that measure those targets. Right? And then there will be some things that you will not achieve that you will want to address very specifically coming back in. So this is why I'm telling you more about specification. We've had three days of all sorts of wonderful conversation. But ultimately, you want to come to a very concise plan and something that then you can spin out of. So from your logic model, filled in with all those things, you're going to want to develop your elevator speech, something that's charming marketing of an idea that's important to our society that you believe in passionately. Right? Uh, so inputs and resources, what do you need? It's obviously not only money. What are the barriers? What are the activities? And you're going to want to start with a very concise group of a few activities. Uh, you may want to use context and conditions for defining your audience. I'm not sure. And there's lots of different ways, different templates for logic models. So that's only one. The output. So what are those first things that you will see as evidence of the things that you have applied? And then the long term. And I was trying to encourage Jeremy, who he is so reluctant to share. However, <laughs> I think when he talked about... He is. He is. And I know he's... It's not going to acknowledge ownership of the idea, but when you think about computational geoscience and you think of it holistically as defining the most accessible mode of problem solving, which was stated as not even universal design, just universal. Isn't that cool? I mean, what, what could be better than that? That is terribly inclusive. So I just wanted to lay out some things to help frame where we've been and where to go next and to maybe give that a skeletal structure to make moving ahead a little easier. So that's it for me. We have five minutes where I can be very specifically involved in Q&A. Um, oh, I was going to say, did Caitlin run with the candy? So do you mind just sort of making sure anybody who wants candy gets it? You've all been great, so how can I be helpful? Well, no, no, I didn't say that. What questions can I answer? <laughs> we have questions. Does anybody challenge any of this? Is any of this inappropriate? Does anybody challenge. More? <laughs> no challenge. Yeah. Yeah. But think about this when you're writing proposals. Foundations want that information. Of course, you guys have so much money. No, I was not. If you start with that, it's going to get ugly. <laughs> I, I would, I, you know, I think it's right to say proposals, but I also think that there are a number of uh, other kinds of you know partners and uh, you know ways to go about getting resources we were talking about uh, in our breakout session about in industry and going after industrial partnerships to help with this because I think uh, industry has very much a dog in this hunt as they say mm -hmm. they are a, they are a stakeholder because they desperately need and see an upside to connecting geoscience uh, environmental information, let's put it that way, to uh, cyber infrastructure in order, in order to allow them to... Uh, I thought it might melt. You know, make... Yeah, that's true, you know. Thank you. I, I, don't, need a cho I don't need a chocolate fondue experiment on my laptop. <laughs> so so there, there are other things besides proposals that could be done here. Um, another thing which I think is a resource is just the notion of aligning Thank you. our projects together rather than 
preempting anybody's particular project, but if we can align in some way, we can get additive impact from doing that. So that's just a couple ideas. But I think whatever you reach out for, having a really solid plan that you can communicate to someone gives yeah. you a leg up. But yeah, I agree firmly that fiscal resources are almost the least thing on your list. I know right. you can't do things without it, but you really need the partnerships and the pathways. Yeah. Um, so I'm just doing that by way of a listing something else from somebody else. Good job. You got it from me already. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm trying to stir up the... Well, I'm really um, sort of excited no, about the idea that we might align a series of projects or initiatives and do it in a very planful way so that we can actually test different approaches and then share what we learn and the conditions under which each one is either successful or fails. I don't know how we do this, but I have been struck again and again by how little we report. We said this before at this meeting that our failures are absolutely critical to helping one another. And if we do this in a planful way and we agree from the beginning that we're not going to just boast, I think we might really help ourselves advance the whole uh, community effort. Glad to hear that you're saying that because I feel the same way. I would also encourage, because we are a scholarly community, each of these steps that you identify, we were talking about documented good practices. Get the documentation. Get the literature references and citations that support each of your decisions. We talked about the why, and the why had a lot to do with multicultural problem solving. Great. Get citations. Why is that a good thing? That's I think we've had a couple break, uh, during the break kind of discussions, at least I've been part of, where we're talking about how the educational research community and um, the astronomy community now has a kind of nascent citation database, which is called STEMDEX. STEMDEX, Stem which which can we can build on perhaps to uh, because. Again, from somebody in my situation who's essentially on the techie science side of the equation, I need that uh, that uh, re those resources in order to write a credible proposal that has, like, where's the assessment piece? And I'm, yeah. I'm like, I'm not going to write the assessment piece. Yeah. Somebody in this room would be a collaborator, perhaps, to write an assessment piece. We need that. That's what. That's what working together in, the, in, a, in that kind of a partnership does for you, is it gets you to cover off all those weak areas. But we don't want to too strongly divorce the physical sciences from the social sciences. So, so what you might feel more comfortable in offering might be the, the context of the climate science or the needs of climate science or those kinds of things or the threat posed by our changing climate. Well, one thing I wanted to put up that I did not put up is the, the map of science, which shows the actual sort of graph structure of science. If you look at where geosciences are, they're the, like a switch yard. I mean, there are rays coming out of that in every direction. Absolutely. Um, and to me, to me that, that really means it's hard to think of a, a science that doesn't really somehow touch on that. So, you know, you... you One way to uh, geochemistry is to is that we've been... One of the ways we've been selling the geochemistry and geosciences to uh, DOE's uh, Basic Energy Sciences Program is that we've been doing mesoscale issues for a long time. Clouds are mesoscale. You know, complex solutions are mesoscale. And there is uh, an indication that meso is going to be what nano was mm. many years. And that is going to be one of the next items that we can propose, the next big jump in scientific funding from Congress, is you need a new concept for more money. And the feeling is that it's going to be mesoscale. And so 
this really plays well into that. So my time is up. I really offer this as something to help maybe pull things together for the conference, but I also offer it to you uh, because you're all going to be and have been doing proposals of different sorts, conversational, full formal written out, and I think this may help to give more of a structure to how you perceive of those things. So good luck, and I hope it was helpful. Thank you very much. Thank you.